Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can have five different ways of displaying all of your commands on your streaming channel. Primarily Twitch, but also applicable to YouTube gaming and also Facebook gaming as well. So obviously commands are super, super popular for streamers now. They've been around for a long time. You can customize them. You can have timers. People use these in all kinds of different ways, including for like gambling, loyalty points and website links and all kinds of weird stuff like that. I've even had some some people use them for things like displaying what mods are installed in a game and stuff like that. So come and ask questions. So I'll, I'll link a video above and also in the description below a little bit more about some actual really cool commands that you can add to your channel, which you may find useful. But specifically in this video, I'm concerned with telling you how you can communicate all of your commands to your viewers. So it's easier for viewers to be able to use them and engage better on your channel. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It should be a relatively short video. We'll rock it through these five things in no time. If you're interested in more streaming videos or you just like this content, hit the like if you find it useful, of course. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let's do this. Okay, so the first tip here is to be able to display it on like a Word document or a Google document or something like that. Now, there are pros and cons to doing this. A con is that someone's going to have to click the link to go off your stream or potentially onto their second monitor to be able to look at all of your commands. But the benefits of doing this are that you can at least format the commands a lot better. So you can add headers, you can bold, italics, you can change the size of the text, and you can also fit a lot of commands on those pages as well. So the user will probably appreciate the breadth and formatting, whereas they may not appreciate the fact that they're having to click off to get access to those commands. The good thing is you can really easily set these up. Google Docs, for example, are free. You just need to make sure that you make the link public so that anyone can view that link. Obviously, you want to make sure that editing is turned off so that people can't change the document. I've seen people use these in all kinds of different capacities. Obviously, using them for commands is the purpose of this video. But some people use documents like this to list, for example, all the mods that they have within a game within a command. So they'll just have the URL to a document that lists all of the mods that they have on the game. And it's just a really neat professional way of displaying lots of information. The second tip of where you can display your channel commands would be to actually list it on a website. Now, there are loads of different places that you can get websites, and we'll just get into that in a second. But for now, if you're using something like Stream Elements or Streamlabs, there's normally a section within there where you can literally automate any new commands that you add to be shown onto a page. But also, you can choose whether you want to restrict that as well. So, for example, within Streamlabs Online, if you visit streamlabs.com and go to the cloud bot and commands section here, within any of these commands, obviously, these are the commands themselves where you control add them amend them but you can edit a command go into the advanced tab and you can toggle whether or not you want to hide it on the tip page then what you would do if you're in streamlabs would be to go into the custom tip page section here this will pop out a site editor within this site editor you're able to change all of these panels add new panels scroll down add sections here and all that kind of stuff it's a really intuitive way of displaying your brand adding themes to it and adding all kinds of things including of course the donation itself but if we just click into content here within this content there's a section called cloud bot commands now if you drag and drop this into one of the sections it will display all of the commands available through cloud bot but of course if you're not using streamlabs obs you can just have an, a text panel that you keep it updated with and that basically does exactly the same job but just got to manage it manually within streamlabs online tip page you do also have this option to manage site pages and there are auto generated pages you can choose to toggle on the cloudbot page which basically switches on a page for cloudbot and shows that extra content about the commands you can give it an alias i've given it an alias of my loyalty points here but by default it's forward slash cloudbot once this is turned on obviously you'll have to click save then when you go into your domain forward slash cloudbot like this you'll see a section where where it's all of the commands that are available and the viewer can click whether they want the moderator ones, the broadcaster or everyone commands. Select through all these and this is kept up to date, bearing in mind the ones that have been hidden from the tip page. I said I would talk about other free websites that are available in case you don't want to go with Streamlabs or Stream Elements. If you just look at free websites and there's loads and loads of providers out there, some of the ones that I would probably recommend, I've used Wix websites before, wix.com. Weebly's a really, really common website provider. Squarespace make beautiful websites. That could be 
a good option for you. And even buying a domain from GoDaddy, you're able to have a website builder from the domain provider. Here, you're able to add themes, CSS, HTML stuff, JavaScript. And of course, for this video, you can add any content like an extra tip page, list all of your commands and things like that. So the third thing is to actually list the commands themselves within a command. For example, exclamation point commands. We can edit a command and literally list some of the key commands for your channel in here. Or of course, you could list the page to the document that we mentioned earlier, or even a page to the website so that people can view it on the website. But of course, you can delete this and paste in any new information about specific commands that you want to be included in there the problem with this is that you do only have 500 character limit so you could have commands one and you could have another one which is commands two commands three and just you can basically have an unlimited amount of commands within them and the user will then just have to select between one two and three to see which commands are available now obviously this isn't the nicest solution but the thing is there is a massive benefit to this the viewer doesn't have to leave your stream they don't have to leave the website they don't have to go to another website another document they can just put the command in in chat so although it's not as informational in terms of them having to list multiple commands to get lots of different command information, they can at least do it in chat and do it immediately on the fly. So that's probably quite a, a good thing. So there is a little bit of a trade-off there in terms of usability versus function. The fourth way I would recommend you potentially listing all of your commands for your channel would be within your YouTube gaming description or your Twitch panels descriptions. This could be just in the form of an image, a little bit like this, where you're actually listing them in an image. The thing is that will need to be kept up to date. So if you're adding new commands all the time, you may not find this version convenient as a potentially a text version of it. One option here is that you could list the main commands or some really key commands in the panel and then link to let's say a document or something like that or a website for all of the rest of the commands so this just gives people on your channel people that are looking for a little bit more engagement a flavor of what they can do when they first land on your twitch stream or your youtube gaming stream you probably already know how to do this but if you go into your twitch.tv forward slash your username forward slash about section that will get you to your page make sure that you clicked on the about and we can edit these panels within these panels we can upload an image they need to be scaled to be 300 120 pixels wide but they can be as long as you would want them to be i probably wouldn't recommend making them any longer than around about 640 so basically about twice as long as they are wide the image itself can have text images on them or you can just have some commands listed in this section here for example if we take our commands from here we could paste them in here and they're available for people to view Now, the final tip is actually adding it as a visible source on your stream. Now, this probably seems like a really unintuitive way of doing it, but there are some very intuitive ways that you can create like a list of commands that can be displayed on screen whenever you choose them to be. For example, if someone asks in chat or maybe they appear for a little while and then disappear. So what I'm just going to do is go through a couple of different options for you of different ways that you can display the commands on your stream. So to illustrate this, I'm going to use both Streamlabs OBS or Slobs, and I'm also going to use OBS. OBS Studio to illustrate a few different ways that you can display this. But first of all, I'm going to dive into Photoshop just to create a quick panel and show you a few tricks that we can then use within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. So what I'm really going to do here is create a quick panel that we can then edit for display on stream as a source. I'm just going to put it the same size as the Twitch panels for now, so 320 wide by 640. Again, I'm in Photoshop here. You don't have to be in Photoshop. You can do this in Paint if you really want, but there's also GIMP and a few other free or photo editing softwares out there that you can use. So first we need obviously the information that we want to display. So I'm going to add a new layer here. I'm going to, I need to be careful because I don't want this turning into a Photoshop tutorial. I'm going to paste in all of the text from the command list that we had in the Word document. I'm going to make these whatever color, black's fine for now. Now we're just going to format these within Photoshop or the photo editing software. So I've just thrown together a really sort of quick and dirty set of commands that can be listed here. The good thing about this is it could be stretched to fit a portion of the screen on your broadcasting software, but I'm just going to talk about the transparency. Now we've got a layer here, which is like a gradient layer that I can choose to keep and potentially make it semi-transparent or a little bit opaque at a later stage. Or we can just remove this and save this as a PNG file. So file, save as. We want to save it as a PNG file. We save a copy. So if you save this as a PNG file, it'll keep the transparency and therefore it'll only be the black outline that will display and, and of course, 
course, the logo here. But we can also save it as a JPEG with a gradient on it. Another option here is that we can have another layer and we can fill this layer a green layer and then basically chroma out whatever color this is on that layer. So it's basically a few different ways of doing the same thing. We're either chromaing out the transparency, which means that the broadcasting software is taking the color away or we're saving it as a PNG. From a performance point of view, saving it as a PNG does work better, but you may just want the option to do different things here. So having a layer that's saved with the gradient, a layer that's saved with the green, and a layer that's saved as transparency, having all of them within a nested source might be what you want to do for your broadcasting software. Now, the first option of displaying those commands here within your broadcasting software physically on screen is just going to be a straightforward image. So we're going to go to the plus icon here, add an image, add the source, we want it as a new source, we'll name it commands we'll add the source and we'll browse to the desktop to pick up that file now if you want to go for the file that is the png that it's already transparent you could pick that and as we can see here we've got the transparency and we can save this what i'd probably do if i was to do this again is put an outline around that text don't worry too much about that for now we can now manipulate this but the good thing about it is we can choose to display this for people whenever we want whenever people ask for the commands that is one option the green so we're going to chroma key out in this particular instance click done on that we stretch it out obviously we don't want the green to be there unless you do, which is also fine. And now within the image, we right click and we go onto filters. We want to select chroma key, whether this is in Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, doesn't really matter. We're selecting chroma key as the filter. So what we're really looking to do here is just to play around with these until we're happy with how this looks. Actually, the green here around the letters looks pretty cool, but I'm not so happy with how it looks on the logo. But you can play around with these until you remove all of the green or until you just leave some of it there if you want it to stand out. So that's another option. Probably not the preferred option. I do think that from a performance point of view, having a PNG image is better for your PC rather than the software trying to continually pull out the transparency, if that makes sense. Now, within this fifth suggestion to display the commands on your stream as a source, there is something called a source switcher within OBS Studio. Studio. It's a really powerful plugin if you use it well. I did cover this here. I'll leave the card there. Basically, what this does is allows you to rotate different sources within the same source. So you create the three, four, five, however many sources you want, and then you interchange between them and you set how frequently it does that. And you can even set periods where it is blank so it doesn't display at all. So essentially, every half an hour, you could have it so it rotates on what the commands are and then rotates that off again. And that just keeps it a little bit less cluttered on your stream. I'm not going to go into the details of this in this particular video video because I've already covered it in that video, but you definitely should check that out if you get a chance to and if you're on OBS Studio. So there you go. Five different ways of listing every single channel command that you have on your stream. Hopefully you've picked up some creative ideas from this video. If you have, do hit the like because Google algorithms, YouTube algorithms. Don't forget to have a wonderful day. Take care.